Hey everyone, welcome again. In the last video, we covered the overview of Redis and we installed Redis using Docker Desktop. We saw how to run it. In this video, we will set up a Spring Boot project in order to work with Redis. So let's get started. To create a new Spring Boot project, we'll use the Spring Initializer plugin in the IntelliJ, but you can use the web version as well. We'll use Maven and the group would be code alchemist artifact redis 101 and uh, that's it yes we are going to use java 17 which is the lts version hit next and now we need to add the dependencies for redis we simply need to search redis that's the only dependency that we need this one spring data redis access plus driver hit next and hit create this window and this is now and this will now configure the project that we just created it will try to download the required dependencies from the internet so if you open the pom we see there is only one dependency which is this one spring boot starter data redis this is the test dependency and if you go to the main folder here we have this main application And in the resources, we have an empty application.properties file. Now that it has downloaded all the required dependencies, we can start with the application. Now, if you go back to the POM and if you notice that we are using this dependency, so Spring Boot knows that we are trying to create a Redis based application, we are trying to connect with Redis. And this information is enough for Spring Boot to auto configure the project. That means if the redis is running on your local host with the default port then spring boot can find it we don't need to provide anything in the application.properties in our case because redis is running on local host with the default port so spring boot will be able to talk to the redis container we don't need to do anything explicitly like mentioning the host or port or anything it's all taken care of so let's go back to the main application and try to interact with that redis container to do that We'll create a beam of type application runner and we'll say this. Now there is this string redis template which we will cover later, but this is one of the templates that is auto configured by the spring boot based on the default details as we talked about because in our case redis is running on the local host with the default port so a spring boot will find that running instance and it will use that detail use that data to auto configure the template that is required in order to communicate with redis so we can auto wire it we can inject it and this is string and this is string redis template this one let's name it redis template once we have the working redis template injected to our bin we can use the supported methods to work with redis now if we go back if you remember that when we were using redis terminal we used this key to set the value now programmatically we will try to read this value my key so let's use this redis template now to access the same key programmatically so we'll use redis template dot supported method now in this case because the type is basically a string type so we are going to use ops for value and then get method then we need to pass the same key which was my key and now we can print it like this and if we run this program now we see the same value my value which we could see here in the terminal so in this video we configured the spring boot project then we ran the redis container we set up a value a simple key then we used redis template to read that key now if you notice we don't need to configure anything else spring boot was able to connect to the redis container that's all for this video 
In the next video, we will explore Redis operations and we'll see how to use Spring Boot to use those operations. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.